Today we're doing a service on a automatic transmission, it's a Trimatic uh, with a 253. Uh, we don't see many of these anymore and this old bloke's uh, restoring this so you can see the spider webs, cobwebs everywhere. Been sitting in his shed for a few years. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and do the service on the transmission. This is uh, a HX uh, Holden Kingswood uh, 1977. So as usual, we'll, uh, they don't have a drain plug on the transmission, so we've got the, the vacuum pump. We just stick the hose in there. Give it a bit of a twirl because sometimes it hits the top of the valve body and you can see the, the hose is darkened where it's sucking the oil up now. Now we go, you can see it's sucked all the oil, it's starting to suck a bit of air. Transmissions, they've, uh, the only solenoid that they've got in there is a kick down solenoid. Um, they operate from a vacuum modulator. This pipe here is, goes from the, the inlet manifold there and there's a little little hole there that creates a bit of vacuum. You've got to make sure that this hose is not cracked or anything and also what we do is we pop that off we put a little drill bit in there just to make sure the little orifice in there hasn't carboned up and we'll do the same at the bottom where the that vacuum hose goes into the vacuum modulator. Now we've just got this little little drill and we will just slowly put it in there. There is there is a little bit of resistance there, so it is carboned up. Let's clean out that little orifice so the modulator can get vacuum to it. Now what happens if if this hose is has come off? Um, whoever's put this hose on it doesn't look like it's an original one anyway. We'll pr put a proper vacuum hose on there. Here you can see it there. Um, if these come off, um, the hose are perished or whatever, it'll be stuck in first gear. So these operate off that engine vacuum, so you need to have the vacuum supplied to the transmission. Of, of course, this is a standard transmission. Some um, bypass the vacuum modulator altogether and put a different type of valve body in it. The bottom of the transmission. You can see that hose, someone's really bodged up that hose so we'll have to replace all that make sure it's all sitting in nicely. Um, with, with those modulators it operates on a little valve and there's a little modulator pin. Um, you can adjust if you've got uh, low engine vacuum on the motor, like when they put a lumpy cam in there. Um, you can can fiddle with the, the length of the pin, but you can't go too much longer and too much shorter. If you've got low low engine vacuum, what you do is you actually shorten the pin slightly. Um, so that operates a little bit better. If you've got 3-2 uh, shift, which is your kick down, um, if it's really harsh you can also uh, shorten the modulator pin a little bit. Uh, the minimum of the, the, the shortening that we found is 870 thou and the maximum is one inch and 65 thou. They're the tolerances. Some modulators you can get an adjustable one where where in there you have a little uh, there's a little adjustment screw you can screw it in or uh, back it off to just improve the shift quality. Uh, if you've got a uh, a harsh shift you need a softer modulator so you basically you back the screw out if it has an adjustment and you can put a longer pin in um, to improve that shift quality but a lot of it's trial and error so um, 
just by experience. We used to do a lot of these transmissions years ago. Now they're very hard to, to find, but they don't come in that often. Well, uh, we'll just blow around the outside of the pan rail, just make sure it's nice and clean. Um, just a quick inspection. Um, it looks like the extension housing seal's weeping a little bit of oil, so I'll mention that to the customer. Uh, apart from that, everything seems okay. The linkages, which are there, they just they don't seem too bad. It's been sitting in the shed for, for quite a while. So you just make sure these cooling lines aren't rubbing on the chassis anywhere. They go, go up to the radiator for the cooling. Uh, what else? The vacuum hose. You can see it's just it was just sitting there. It's the wrong hose as well. Um, looks like they put a double hose on there as well. You can see it's not the vacuum hose. Someone's adapted it. Um, important also to pop that hose off and just see if there's no fuel vapor or or oil coming out of there. Uh, the fuel will sometimes dissolve the little diaphragm in the in the modulator. The way you get these off, you just get the spanner in there. I think I'm not sure what size it is, but um, I've got a special one. It doesn't have a. And you just unscrew that. Some modulators, like on the C4s, they have a push-in modulator. Again, some have adjustment, some don't. You can um, adjust it with the length of the pin, but it's important not to go too short or too too open. If it's too short, the valve won't work um, through its proper travel, and if it's too long, the valve can't move enough to, to operate properly. Anyway, we'll just blow out this pan rail and drop the pan. Because we suck the oil out of these, um, it's a little bit less messy, but the exhaust pipes are in the way a little bit. So if you didn't um, have a vacuum pump and you had to just undo um, the pan and drop it down slowly, one, it's going to be very mess messy, and two, it can be dangerous if the oil's still hot so it's a good idea to let it cool down a bit because you sometimes have to maneuver this pan to get it out properly uh, i'm not sure if this one will come out easily but you can see uh, on both sides the pan sort of obstructed by the exhaust we've tried to get the pan off but uh, the exhaust in the way so basically what i'm going to do is just Loosen these two uh, box uh, bolts off the cross member and lift the transmission up a little bit higher and that'll hopefully separate a little bit from the exhaust pipe just so I can just get it out, pop it out of here. Over here you have the servo cover, that's where the band adjustment is. Um, and we'll, we'll see where the filter is when we get the pan off. So a little bit more work involved before we get the pan off. And there we have it, we've got the pan off, we had to undo the, the uh, exhaust bolts to just be able to manoeuvre the pan out. This here is the filter, it's got three bolts. You've got the kick down solenoid, you just make sure that these bolts are tight because um, they loosen over a period of time because I think that what happens the solenoid's constantly working. Um, we do have an adapted um, solenoid plate which has a an o-ring in here just so it seals better. The servo or the servo cover which is where the band is, the adjustment, is under here. Um, what we do, uh, usually I think it's five turns, um, recommended six turns on the V8s, 40 inch pound and back it off. Also you'll get a fair bit of muck in, in that servo cover so it's a good idea to just give it a clean out. And we'll just, it's still a little bit warm, so we'll just filter and it's a 
so if I cover and you can see how much muck's in there so we'll clean that up as well now important when you loosen this lock nut there um, it's a 9 16 and a half inch spanner just count how many turns it goes in and that'll give you an indication of how worn the band is if it's worn at all our tension wrench to 40 inch pound we'll put that in there and we count how many turns so one two three four five oh, gonna drop it six so she is worn seven eight they might be broken nine nine and three quarter turns which is pretty it's either very worn or someone has not adjusted it properly so we'll just pull a little pin back in back just there we go so we'll back off five turns one two three four five and just do up that lock nut the band's very worn in this one and that's basically the service so we'll replace the filter clean the servo cover adjusted the bands tightened up these two bolts just check around everything just nip them up if they're um, a bit loose um, I'm not sure I'd have to have a look in the book but just from experience these ones loosen up they need to be pretty tight um, don't go overboard because it's only in alloy you'll break the uh, strip the bolts on the case the modulator is not leaking uh, we're going to replace those rubbers um, just so it seals better at the bottom and at the top uh, clean the orifice at the top if it's carboned up and that's basically your service on a Trimatic in a HX uh, Holden we we'll cover back on now it's important not to over tighten these um, ideally would be to check the tension um, setting of the of the bolts because it goes into alloy it can um, warp the case a little bit and then you get uh, cracks or in these particular ones the valve bodies in this cast iron um, unit which can take a, a lot harder tightening but in some of the alloy ones you can actually lock up the valves um, on the filter there's the old filter there and it didn't even have a, a gasket on it so make sure you put a, a gasket on it a new gasket and also make sure that the gasket sometimes one of these holes is covered um, just so you don't block it make sure it's open um, I like to put both bolts through just so it holds everything in place so it doesn't uh, misalign and we'll put the, fil the new filter back on check your work make sure you've done up all the bolts that you've unloosened and lock nuts um, when you're putting the pan on uh, make sure the pan rail is dry from oil otherwise it will weep the oil will weep through the gasket um, also put the bolts in just by hand loosely before you do them up when we do them up we go in across one each side and when we do it finally we just check it by hand also careful not to over
Okay, we've replaced the bottom vacuum hose and I've replaced the top one with the proper uh, well, proper vacuum hose and just bent this vacuum pipe into shape just so it doesn't rub on anything and also so it's sort of pulling down so that when when the rubber gets hot so that doesn't pop off as the rubber softens. Anyway, we're just going to put some Dextron 3 fluid in this. Open the If you haven't got um, a pump like we have, you, you have to do it with a funnel. Just be careful to go in slowly. Um, and also, you check the oil level with these at operating temperature with the motor running. Now we've put about three and a half litres in. We're just gonna go through all the gears. Slowly. Oh, still needs a tune up. Won't idle. Needs to warm up a bit, I think. And then we'll just check the oil level before we take it for a test run been on a test run uh, at operating temperature the oil levels a little bit too high so we'll just go ahead now and uh, vacuum a bit of uh, suck a bit of oil out of the filler tube there just to, to the right level um, if if you're doing this job yourself and you overfill it uh, what can happen the oil's too much over the uh, the top mark it can hit the spinning parts and aerate the oil um, as, the, as the spinning parts aerate the oil. Um, because it's a hydraulic unit, oil is very hard to compress. Air can uh, compress and you can get spongy shifts, burn out your clutches and your bands, etc. So it's always important to have the oil at the correct oil level or uh, problems can occur. Anyway, we'll... we'll Suck a bit of that oil out and the job's done basically. Measured the dipstick up to the hot mark with the tube and put it in just to that to that length there where the hot hot mark is. And it's just gonna suck out that amount of oil. There it is there now. And as you can see, you can just see sucking a bit of air now. There you can see it's right at the hot on the hot mark. I don't know if you can focus that. There we go. And the job's done. There we have it. That's how you do a three-speed trimatic service in a HX Kingswood. Thank you for watching.